Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming along once again. Today, we're going to do a, a really interesting and very valuable stream. And what we're really talking about is the benefits of doing Sunshin and Tensho on a daily basis. Now, basically, anything that you do, if you want to get uh, progress, it must be done consistently. It must be done with focus and attention, and it must be done with a high degree of faith. I know that faith is one of those words that a lot of people don't talk about, but especially scientists, but the fact of the matter is every scientific experiment that's ever been performed is based on a, a bit of faith in a hunch that someone had, which led to a hypothesis, which led to testing, which led to what we now consider to be scientific proof and law and all that stuff. Anyway, thanks for coming, guys. Look, I really think this is a, a really important subject. And I can only say that with the benefit of my years, because when you're young, and I mean in karate, when you're anywhere up to about 30 years old, you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof, and you don't understand the way that the body deteriorates subtly over time. And by deterioration, I just mean it can be chemically, the, the, the lowering of even testosterone levels and things like that, and also elasticity in the joints. Is that, that fair? Absolutely, yeah. And generally become um, more dehydrated just as a general rule over time. Um, the things that we neglect in our training and ranges that we neglect in our body, the, the connective tissues become more fibrous. They become stiffer and tighter, which then limits movement which then you think, oh, it's not a big deal. My arm, I used to be able to lift it here, now it's here. But you give it long enough and then it's not even there. It, it drops away and that results in joint pain from not moving enough and things seize up. So there's this compound effect that happens in a great direction or a not so great direction. And we all get to choose that every day. And I think this is what you're talking about today. Yeah, indeed. And uh, the beauty of the Sanshin and Tensho Kata is that they provide a range of motion in various... Uh, techniques that absolutely uh, contribute to correcting those small problems as they s sneak in. So if you do karate and you are able to do the Sanshin and Tensho on a daily basis, then that will go a long way towards ensuring that over time you maintain a far more youthful uh, and active posture. It's very, very important. Old man, hips, knees, and ankles. Yep, powerlifting and strong man have taken the toll. Is Absol that a fair call? Oh, absolutely. It's a yeah. You're absolutely Lamb, spot on. Was it? I can't remember, but mm. I, you're absolutely spot on with that. Our bodies are designed to do, you know, to be able to lift and move and do all these things. But chronically loading the spine in that manner um, and the joints in that manner over time, the joints have got X amount of work in them or, or work capacity in them, and if we um, go beyond that work capacity in either intensity, in terms of load, volume, um, range, whatever it happens to be, the body starts to break down a little quicker than otherwise. And indeed, when you're talking about powerlifting and weightlifting, it's just a natural thing that you want to lift more and lift often and lift uh, heavier. And so just the nature of the sport is that you're going to get a lot of compression in the spine. For me, the number one thing that determines deterioration of uh, a youthful body is spine. If you can maintain suppleness and flexibility in the spine, you can maintain a very youthful uh, movement framework until you're very much, much older than normal. So the spine is just uh, vital. And thank you to the gods of karate who created Sanshin and Tencho for us, we have uh, these great exercises that can contribute towards our long-term spinal health. Another thing too is the external rotation and scapular retraction, which is a natural part of a good Sanshin and Tencho. And the first thing that we'll show you today is the way Sanshin and Tencho quite often are done incorrectly based on a limited flexibility through the shoulders. The next thing too, which happens as you get older, is a loss of range of motion in all joints, but especially the shoulders. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you've had training stimulus that 
takes that away. So if you haven't put your body, your bones in those positions or the joints in those ranges, there's a good old saying. It's so true. If you don't use it, you lose it. And that's what happens over time. Al's ask a question. What would be your take on deloading of the spine with, say, belt squats or reverse hyperextension? So it's a great question. Um, I probably, you can do those things, definitely. Um, but I actually take it, my view is to take it a step further. And you want to put the bones into traction as much as possible. And the way you're going to put the bones into traction as much as possible is not by lifting weights necessarily. It's actually just by stretching. So the, the, the stimulus um, of strength training is a tension producing um, stimulus. So it brings the bones and joints closer together um, through the muscle contraction. So the, the opposite and equal to that would be um, stretching that or tissue work that pulls the bones apart from each other, if that makes sense. And one of the reasons, Al, that you mentioned earlier, old man hips, knees, ankles from powerlifting and so on, I've worked in um, powerlifting and strength-based sports for over 20 years. And um, there's a real culture in those sports of not to stretch. It's a very anti-stretching, anti-tissue work culture. There's a little bit more of the tissue work coming into it now, but over time, it hasn't, in my view, it hasn't been that strong. So as an example, um, for every hour that you're training in the gym, ideally it would be an hour that you do stretching to reverse the joint challenges, the chronic joint challenges you're gonna have down the track from that. Um, but it takes a little bit of the wisdom of Solomon to understand that a lot of the time. Technically, too, if you're working the whole five ranges, and particularly if you do a lot of uh, stand-up grappling style, uh, even groundwork, the nature of the sport is that you will take a fetal shape to the spine. So in actual fact, what is good for the spine is bad for the grapple. Spinal care, you need extension. You need uh, rotation of the shoulders. But when you grapple, that's the last thing you want to do. You create too much space. So when you grapple, of course, you come in, the elbows come in, the shoulders concave, and you protect everything. Even when you do stand-up fighting and you use that peekaboo style to protect your neck and so on. So the range of motion in your neck decreases. The range of motion in your spine decreases. And in actual fact, you unconsciously compress the spine a, a, a compressed tight round spine is very good for grappling and this is why Masayama used to say all the time that you could judge a martial artist by his posture and determine which style of martial arts that he did so essentially kendo which is all about strong extension of posture uh, scapular retraction, retraction and uh, eyes up and karate will improve your posture over time, provided you do it correctly. Whereas judo, uh, grappling, wrestling, they all have the reverse effect because over time, you're the ideal posture. You've only got to look at two guys uh, shaping up for a kendo fight, two guys shaping up for a karate match, two guys shaping up for a judo match and then two guys shaping up for a wrestling match. And you'll see the difference in the way they shape their posture. Okay. So today what we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, show you as I go through Sun Chin and Tencho, I will we'll have a look and we'll use uh, Mitch. He can make the observation in the parts that make it uh, useful. And there, are, there are certain things that you can, even if you're at the dojo training twice a week, there are some things which ideally you want to be doing every single day. And that is some flexibility work and particularly Sun Chin. One Sun Chin, one Tensho, great place to start. Have faith in what you're doing. You must recognize that the introduction of any new concept or any new uh, training. Uh, addition takes time to see benefits so you must have faith in what you're doing you must that's what will allow you to be consistent over time i know from uh, over time too it's very easy to injure your spine and neck when you grapple particularly your, your neck uh, because you use your head as a fifth limb and and the conscious use of the head in dominant head position will damage your head it'll also save your head if you Come in with your head at the incorrect angle. We may even be able to demonstrate this. You'll damage your spine 
far more than if you come in with your head at the correct angle. So that's very important. I know Uncle Gene, Gene LaBelle, he had a, um, a, a traction machine at his house. Uh, bless his heart, Uncle Gene died at about 90 years old just uh, a number of months ago. And whenever you'd go around to his house, uh, he'd put you on a traction machine. If he knew you were grappling, he'd go, well, you need a traction machine. And it was literally a, a frame that would connect here, there, pull up, and he had a machine which would elevate and relax, elevate and relax. And you could set the degree of tension simply because that the necessity for traction over time is vital. Uh, and I'll show, you, I'll show you one exercise which you can do where gravity allows you to do the traction in a very soft and subtle way, uh, and you can incorporate that immediately. I was going to say, Gene LaBelle had worked out for, through personal experience, I'm sure, that um, the only way to reverse the, the damage, when I say damage, that's just the byproduct of training, of physical training. There's always an equal and opposite reaction. Um, so there's a benefit that you get that Shian's talking about, but then there's also the damage that you get or the side effect that needs to be reversed. And Gene LaBelle had obviously clearly worked that out. And that's what I was mentioning to Al before. Um, the tra if, if you don't have a traction machine at home, Sean will show you an exercise, but also stretching is one of the greatest ways to put your body in subtle traction as well. There's two exercises actually that I really like. But anyway, let's have a, a quick look here. Just have a quick look now at Sun Chin and Tencho. Okay, first of all, I'll just look basically at the, the beneficial physical movements. And I'm going to ask Mitch to come in and he can stop me at any time and explain what it is that is beneficial about any movement because the benefit is not just in the upper body but it's also in the movement of the leg coming in and that that adduction here is something which we just don't do on a daily basis which is why you need to reverse that okay so i'm just going to go through first of all the sun chin movement so if we pause there straight away um there's a couple of fantastic things happening here the first thing is chance the external rotation that happens in the arms if i come close to the screen when you see most people you can you can count the knuckles and the front of their hands and that's a degree of internal rotation the rounding of the shoulders the internal rotation of the humerus that we have that happens in life either from training decisions or from just poor posture poor self-belief and you know the weight of the world on our shoulders so this does the exact opposite to that. So you'll see here, Chian's elbows are inside his, the, uh, his fist. So it's not just here, not like it, that. it's there. It's a, real good, yeah, it's a real degree of external rotation for the shoulder. This is a beautiful range for the body to be in. The second thing is, and this happens through the whole carter, so I'll just mention them now, is his feet. Now, as we get older, and Chian will be able to talk about this more than me it becomes more and more difficult to again internally rotate our feet go pigeon foot with our feet but this is one of the greatest things because most people will stand like this feet externally rotated and as they get older they'll stand wider and wider if you go to a barbecue on the weekend and you'll see guys talking the older they are the more sport they've done the wider they get right so we want to have this internal we will the externally rotate here our hip extensors get shortened so we want to lengthen our lateral tissues as much as we can in this position. So while you're young, take advantage of doing that. As we get older and more challenged, go to where your body allows. But we want to ensure internal rotation of our legs as well to stretch these lateral tissues. So if Mitch stands next to me and stands like the person who doesn't correct the natural uh, devolution, of the body as a result of various uh, strength-based and, and sports. In other words, the feet start to turn out, the roll of the shoulders roll forward, so the chest starts to concave, and the knuckles become visible from the front, as opposed to if I step into sunshine. So the first thing is, look, the feet are reversed. My knees are in, my toes are in. Knees are out, toes are out. The sunshine movement reverses that internal rotation of the shoulders and the, the forward rotation which exposes the knuckles as here it's the exact opposite now 
So you see, that's the difference. And this is the benefit of Sanchin. This alone is enormous. Yes. Okay. The next thing is the hiki to the retraction of the hand. Saul Sai was very adamant. I'm just going to move over again. Saul Sai was adamant that when you withdraw, the elbow is not visible. See that? If my elbow is visible, once again, I'm allowing the chest to concave and I'm, I'm getting an internal rotation of the shoulder. The correct way to do it is as I withdraw, the elbow becomes invisible. Now, if you were to actually look at my back, and if you were to put your fingertips in my shoulder, between my shoulder blades, you would feel the retraction of the shoulder blades pulling together from that hickey there. Okay, so that's a really important thing because I see people, when they're practicing basics, the elbows are out. If there is one thing that you can make a difference in your training, it's retract the elbow so it becomes invisible to the front here like that. So we withdraw, rotate, out. Once again, internal pull of the elbows, external rotation of the shoulders. And if we could just go back to the Hikate, please, Shian. Two things here. Firstly, as Shian said, the scapular retraction here, something Ian said years ago was you want to pretend you've got a winning lotto ticket between your shoulder blades. And it's a winning ticket. And if you know you don't contra contract your shoulder blades, it'll blow away and lost all the money. So that's one way to think of it. But the other thing for the Hikate here is this is so great for the anterior deltoids as well. This stretch on the front of the shoulder is a beautiful thing for our body, um, for our chest and the front of our shoulders to get, because we just don't get that. Think of when you go through life, how often you'll actually do this. You'll get your arm behind your body. It's such a rare thing. So we want to maintain that through, if you don't lose it, don't use it, you lose it. And this is one of the beautiful things that Sanchin offers um, all of us. And you should be able to in that respect, Brilliant. Not that I can do it, but you've got it, yeah. You should be able to touch your fingers behind like this. If, when I used to do yoga, you could just take a full and grip. But because yoga works to all the joints in every direction, it's very beautiful. But this will contribute to that health, shoulder health tremendously. Out, there. Once again, once again, the inward. So as you're stepping, as Shian steps in and his feet together, just pause there for a second. That's a fantastic position for these lateral tissues of the leg we talk about being internally rotated, but also together because people stand so wide and this shortens these lateral tissues. So even though it's only for a split second, where the Xian's in that position as we transfer between um, Hidati and Mickey and Hidati, the, 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 the sides, that's just a great stimulus for the body. So don't overlook that. Don't shorten that. Really use that. And if you need to, pause in that position for a second just to get a little bit more time and attention there. And you'll find over time, if you're not, this is why I say one of the most important things is be present when you're training. If you're not present, the leg will start to just come forward and that inward movement will become less and less. But it's really important that you maintain that over time to get the benefits. Once again, scapular retraction, out, in, like that. But just for a side on view, please, Shiani, if you want to turn it that way, this is the last thing that I'll share on the fundamentals of here is the alignment of the body. This is huge because most people will stand with their, their backside tilted out like a little dotic here. They're real relaxed through the hips. Their chin will be forward because if the hips are back, the chin needs to be forward a little bit and rounding of the shoulders. Whereas if you look here, the, the way that Xi'an's standing, he's got what he calls a perineal ar arch through here. We call it in physical preparation, thin tummy, tight chin. So the shoulders and the hips are largely in line and he's flat through here. He hasn't got this rounding that we talked about earlier with internal rotation. He's got this flat through here, and his chin position is in as well. It's not sticking forward, which we never want to do in fighting, obviously. We want that into that chin position in, which lengthens and extends the neck extenders as well. It's a common thing as we age, people will have this forward chin position, and these neck extenders get shorter and tighter. They become quite fibrous. And if you go too far with it, it's a challenge to undo especially when you're doing grappling sports and so on. So I'm actually doing a video very soon on what I call the three locks. And I think it's, there's some really key fundamental things you can do when you're walking, when you're sitting, when you're driving, uh, when you're training, that can make a tremendous difference to your spinal health. So just to, and once again, if I could say the chin is not, when we say the chin is down, we don't mean you're doing this. 
what we mean is it's up, of course. It's in and back and extending the spine. So we're lengthening these tissues. He's got the perineal arch here. He's square through here. This is such a great position side on. So I just wanted to mention that before we jump forward. And there's one last thing which I think, if I do it from the side, you'll see the benefits, is when we do the pull, you'll notice this rounds the shoulder and extends the arms, which gives you tremendous stretch in the shoulders here. And then when you withdraw, look, once again, you're kind of telling yourself to try and pull the shoulders or the elbows together as much as you can. I'm not pulling back like this, okay? I'm pulling back so the elbows come together. And out, extend, out, extend, out. Now look at the range of motion in the shoulder. Okay. When you do that, you're actually, you're actually going from the, that internal rotation we talk about. We're actually doing that. We're grabbing the collar and boom, pulling in. And I think it's a headbutt that happens there. Is that correct, Jim? It can be. Can be. And so we're going from internal rotation the rounding to external rotation. So where the rotator cuff's working through a beautiful range. Sorry. Extension and contraction. If you were to check uh, Funakoshi Gichin's book, Karate Do Kyohan. So also it talks about the three points, uh, points of power stress, breath control, and timing of technique. In Karate do Kyohan, one of those is actually the breath control in a different form. Breath control is not just controlling the breath to, as a form, as a way to control the, the, the mind. Breath control can also be a way to uh, control your posture. And in Funakoshi, Gitchin's book, he talks about the. I haven't I haven't read it for a while, but he talks about the uh, extension and contraction of the body, and you can see that even though uh, Funakoshi Gitchin Shotokan, they don't do Sanchin per se, but that concept is very important. This whole idea of extension and contraction is really really. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We're aiming for 2 million subscribers, which means you've only got 1,997,300 to go. <laughs> so this is good to learn. Implies impact and movement in Kaido. Very, very important. And it's not just in Sanchin and Tensho. It, it, the Sanchin and Tensho, the conscious application of the technique, once again, those three keys. The first one is conscious awareness of what you're doing when you're doing it. That's really, really important. And the application of that uh, external rotation and the extension and contraction of the body in all the techniques as you do it. Okay, so let's keep going here because now I want there's a couple of benefits which also apply to the Tensho Kata, but Tensho adds one really beautiful thing that Sanchin doesn't, and that's the rotation and movement through the range of motion of the shoulder. Sosai was adamant, and I'll demonstrate this, that the uh, NK Gyakuski, the movement is not a cut across and a punch. The movement is a large motion. Mawashi Yuke, the large motion. Shito Mawashi Yuke, large motion. That if you do Shito Mawashi Yuke correctly, it's a spinal exercise. You get the spinal rotation, you get the, the high elevation of the shoulder, and then to finish off, you get the, uh, once again, you get the retraction of the collarbone. Very, very beautiful. I don't think a lot of people are fully aware of the benefits of these exercises uh, when they're done correctly. And this is why, as you get older, the key to anything long-term is that regular application, consistent application over time. Okay, let's have a look at... Uh, Tencho, tencho now. So once again, I'm just going to start off with the Tencho movement out here. And it, once again, look, there's the strong scapular retraction. We retract again, not elbow out. Retract with a pull in the scapula. And then one here. The elbow is in, the hand is out. That technically provides you with the habit of generating optimal connection through the body. Remember, leverage is using more and more of my body against less and less of his. So if Mitch was to throw a punch at me, boom, 
and I, I lift and I pull out here, not only am I open here, but also if, if Mitch was to power that in or grab my arm and pull in, then I, because of my elevated shoulder, uh, elbow, it's my arm versus his arm. But if I come in and I keep my elbow, now when he pulls it, because I have my elbow down, I'm able to retract him instead. And you can use it here as well. So if he throws the same punch, if I was to pick it up on the inside, see this elbow coming in there, elbow in there allows for very strong pulling of the body like that, which I wouldn't get if my habit was to pull up here with my elbow elevated. The habit is here. Interestingly, when I learned the arm drag from uh, my wrestling coach, uh, Rico Tipparelli, a lot of guys do the rest of the, the um, arm drag just like this, with the elbow coming up there. Okay, Rico, a wrestler, a um, World Cup champion, uh, multiple times uh, US champion, would teach it with the elbow in like that. Yeah. The elbow was staying, he would stick the elbow to the body. For him, underhook protection was everything. Okay, so let's go back. We're looking at this technique here. One, there's the elbow in. Two, three. Now, here is another hidden benefit, which it's very easy to short to to fall short here. A lot of people will go, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just talking about the health benefits of this when I come here and here. So also I always talked about the large motion. Over time, I can guarantee London to a brick that if over time that as opposed to that, the benefit you get from the shoulder by extending and enlarging the, the uh, range of motion in the shoulder. The cutter itself is there, there, there. But if you, if you do it in the morning as a form of exercise, lift it up, extend, come right around like that and feel the range of motion in the uh, shoulder, okay? And once again, on the other side here, elbow stays in. One, two, three. Here, look, see that large range of motion. I'm forgetting this hand. Large range of motion there like that. Okay. Withdraw. One, two, three. Here. Large. Withdraw. Up, out, up, up, up. Like that. Scapular retraction. Elbows in, hands out. One, two, three. Here, look. This. What are the benefits of that? Enormous. The, the, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's that simple. How many times in life do people lose the ability? When you're kids, we can put our hands above our head. But as we get older, getting the hands above the head becomes here instead of getting vertically above the head. So the extension that we get, the extension, the abduction, all these things are so beneficial for the shoulder. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's the ma major, major reason to extend that movement. And in both Sanshin and Tensho, we finish off with Mawashi Yuke. So here we can do the short movement, which against the punch works very well. That short movement, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that's probably more a goju way of doing it. But for the health benefits and according to Salsa, the large motion, because Salsa would talk about the connection between Enke Gyakuski, Shto, Mawashi Yuke, and Mawashi Yuke. And they're all in this arm, this large motion. See that large motion, Enke Gyakuski, large motion, large motion, Shuta Mawashi Yuke, large motion in. And so I was talking about this. It may be that the punch comes. There, that's where I pick it up. I don't pick it up at the hand because it's sometimes too quick for you. You pick it up at the shoulder here, there, like that. Okay? So we finish off with one large retraction, extension, large, see that shoulder retraction there, uh, extension, and then back. That's that's it in a nutshell. The the benefits 
um, are not necessarily immediate that day, but compounded over time, the benefits will be enormous to you. And it obviously improves the carter as well. And that reminds me of something else too, is that when we do the group carter down the beach or in the park, we do five repetitions of the carter and we do every one of them facing a different direction. And what that does is it internalizes, once again, it brings your, your consciousness, your awareness to the actual technique. It's very easy when you're down the park to orient yourself off that tree or orient yourself off the ocean. Whereas by changing 90 degrees each time, I'll start off this way, finish that way. And then the next time I'll go this way. And then the next time, the third repetition is this way. And the next time, the fourth repetition is this way. And the fifth time, once again, the fifth repetition is back facing the front. And by doing that, not just with Sanchi and Tensho, but with all the kata, when I do some um, um, taikyoku, change, change. Every time you do it, you change 90 degrees. What that does is it forces you to internalize the movement so that you become far more proprioceptively aware okay so i think all these are fantastic benefits to keep in mind from doing the sunshine intention there are other benefits that we've discovered as we do our bjj there are certain uh certain techniques which are used in bjj to break people's balance against certain guard movements you will just literally fall over but we find that by turning and coming into sunshine here that technique no longer works. And, I mean, it, look, everything only works in degrees. Nothing works 100% of the time. But we're finding when we experiment quite often when uh, we're doing sweet techniques against standing people, if you simply take the sun chin stance and slightly change your hip angle, it neutralizes that sweep. We've discovered that. Right? So that's really valuable you as well. It. Well, we worked on it together. You showed us. In terms of neck exercises, we, if you don't have a, contract, a, a traction machine, not many people have, you can buy, I should have brought it, you can buy these blow-up collars. They're like a blow-up collar, you put it around your neck, and a little pump, and it extends your neck. They're really good. I've used one of those when I've had severe neck injury. Two other exercises which I think are really, really important, and I'll show you them now. The first one is the simple downward dog of yoga. Now, most people don't think of the downward dog in terms of neck uh, benefit. But if you come here and extend, now simply soften it. Don't be like this. And I'm looking forward to my head. There is zero benefit to the neck there. What you want to do is, when you do the downward dog, extend the length from here to my shoulder, and from here to my butt, so I want to push back like that, and that is tremendous for shoulder uh, range of motion. And then what I do is I soften my neck and allow gravity to traction my neck. There. So now I just soften my neck, and I allow gravity to do its thing. And that alone is a really good form of neck traction, which is very, very beneficial. The other one, too, is when, I'll do it this way, a good exercise, which a lot of BJJ schools do on a regular basis, is they'll come here and they'll take their knees to one side and their shoulder to the other. This is the yoga move. And often I like to grab my foot but here's the benefit that most people don't do. You rotate and look at your thumb, even if it's out of the corner of your eye. That exercise of looking at your thumb will improve the uh, rotation of your neck tremendously. So you'll get relief in the neck from a, a naturally occurring stiffening of the neck over time. Anything that you can do that can increase the range of motion is a good thing just a question sean with a um downward dog in the neck how long do you hold those positions for generally generally speaking uh you count them in terms of breath Breaths. so 
you'll find that if you can hold down with dog for three complete breaths, and by complete breath, it's like a sun chin breath, but with your mouth closed. So if you're going like that, the way it opens the throat and structures the throat, and then you close it, you keep that open, but you close the mouth. So it goes from to that's one breath and you do that three to six times minimum of three you will find that after th three there's a release so after three or four breaths there's a release you can hold it as long as you like actually there's no reason why you have to stop at three or have to stop at six but a good measurement as you do this over time is three to six breaths preferably five to six breaths so there you have it these are the hidden benefits of doing sanchin and tensho on a daily basis over time the body will ossify the spine will ossify you'll get this natural occurrence of the, the bending forward one of the best ways that you can do that you can relieve that is through the regular practice of sanchin and tensho and then you apply that perineal elevation i'll do a whole video on that soon when you're sitting there is a way to do it when you're sitting a way to do it when you're walking and a way to do it when you're driving because it's slightly different simply because you have your hands forward and your, your shoulders rotated in so you have an internal rotation, which is unavoidable because you've got your hands on the steering wheel. So you have to work on the whole conscious adjustment of the spine, and there's very beautiful uh, ways to deal with that. Mitch, any final words? No, I just encourage everyone to do it. And something that Ian says all the time, come to your own conclusions based on your own experiences. We live in a world now where everyone, so many people want to write and share their experiences, which is awesome. I'm all for people sharing. I love that people do it because we can learn so much. But don't minimize your own experiences through your own sweat, as also I used to say. Yep. That's it. You know, you have the concentric circles, and one of those is your own system, and that's based on the conclusions that you draw from your own experience, as Ian King puts it so succinctly. Okay? It's really important. Very interesting for the neck. I use a long, the long rubber bands, put it on the door handle and lay on the floor with the band. There you go. There's another way to subtle traction. That's yeah. great, Frederick. Yeah. Good traction. Absent resonance is not evidence of absence. Exactly, Alec. I'm glad you said that because I would have forgotten. There you go, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, great to see everybody from all over the world, from Canada, Europe, uh, Scandinavia, Africa. Australia, everywhere. Um, thanks again, guys. I hope you got something out of that. Remember, the three keys to improvement are presence and concentration when you're training, consistency, regular consistency over time, and faith in the path that, path that you're following. Because if you plant a seed and then dig it up every few hours to check whether it's germinating, you're not going to get anywhere. You plant the seed and you have faith that it's going to grow over time. Well, it's the same with your training. You plant the seed of correct technique and correct training and you have faith that over time it'll have the benefit. I can only say that now because after 50 years, I feel very grateful that I've trained for 50 years and I can look back and ask what difference it's made in my life and I can see that. And anyone who's been training... Uh, this long is in the same boat. Uh, there we go, guys. Thanks again. Us, Mitch. Us, thank you, Great John. to see you as Appreciate always. It. And look forward to seeing you next week. Us.